So, Hunter Hunter's Nin Impact has finally shown up online with footage. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not the biggest fan of what was showcased, but I'd be lying if I didn't think the developers aiding didn't cook with the small budget they had. The game, gameplay wise, looks promising. It has shades of Marvel vs. Capcom 3, but that budget is screaming cheap across my screen. I simply said one thing on Twitter, right? And I was like, oh, well, you know, it looks a little low budget. And all the Hunter Hunter enthusiasts were on a childish tyrant about other anime game titles such as Jump Force, Jujutsu Kaisen, Curse Clash, which has nothing to do with this 2D fighter. Nin Impact has upside and that's only because i respect Aiden and what they have brought to the community in the past but man the game looks very indie-ish and that's going to be an issue when trying to get casual gamers on board people will claim that graphics do not matter but that's a load of crap graphics play a huge role during these showcases and even during these award ceremonies and whatnot so stop the bs with the graphics don't matter talk just because you love the series in general i'm just saying if sword art online dropped this same exact title the internet would have ripped this thing to shreds so what did i actually like about the game well they showed that they took off the kitty gloves and allowing the FGC to steer this game in the direction of competitive play. Similar to Power Rangers Battle for the Grid, the roster is to be very small at launch, 16 playable characters, which can easily double via DLC if sales go well. So far, the confirmed characters are Gon, Killua, Leario, Karapaka, Hisoka, Netero, Machi, and Obogan. Depending on how this video does, I will have a roster wishlist video I mean, 16 characters, we kind of predict most of the people already. Anywho, I also did like that other than your normal supers in the game, we have what is called Overgear. Overgear is a system that can be only used once during battle, and when active, it increases the character attack power, movement speed, etc. It seems that the smaller the number of people you have on your team, the more power it will increase. So if you activate overgear in a difficult situation, you can expect a tremendous power boost. Guys, that is basically X Factor from MVC3. Overgear can be activated not only normally, but also during moving and guarding, making it a useful trump card so that you can do it both offensively and defensively. I love that. Like I said, I'm a big fan of Marvel vs. Capcom series, and NBC3 was so dope for me. I thought to myself, if this game has any shades of that, it's going to be a hit. And so far I see it, it looks like that. Only glaring issue is, it just looked like a Flash game, and that's the problem I'm having. I'm not trying to be a hater, I just do not like the way or the direction they're going. It will, and it can change at launch, I do know that. I love that aiding is bringing their experience from the fan favorite titles and putting it in this game and i'll be fair and say that is early on things can drastically change at launch we've seen it before with titles such as battle for the grid they even have impact hit sounds when a game first drops i just think that people that will benefit from this game are those who enjoy fighting games and not hunter hunter now hear me out the most fan friendly stuff comes in the form of arena fighter because it's easier to adapt jojo all-star battle r dropped a while back people purchased the game as jojo fans and quickly dropped it because the game although it had an easy combo button just wasn't easy enough to keep the audience i could be wrong but from my experience i've seen it happen from time to time a game that is worth everyone's attention for less than two months and that sucks for the developers any home what is your initial thoughts when the trailer dropped am i being too harsh or is there some sort of truth to this i'm out of here and as always i'm enigma signing off peace guys